Hi, I want to take a moment this Father's Day to have a little talk about what it's like for men such as myself that are forced to grieve the death of their children who are still living. There was a quote on a channel, a YouTube channel today, and I normally wouldn't shine any light on this channel because 90% uh, of the content's not light that I would, uh, not something I would shine light on, okay? I'm not a fan of the good buddy old Powell rhetoric that, uh, and in my life experience of 52 years, anybody that has the good buddy old Powell attitude is somebody that you want to keep at an arm's distance. But anyway, the prepared homestead had a quote at the beginning of his video today that was absolutely incredible. And I'm going to start this video out by repeating that quote. The quote is by an Alexander, and I don't remember the last name and couldn't pronounce it. If, if I had it in front of me, I couldn't pronounce it. It's Russian, I do believe. But this is the quote. The most terrifying force of death comes from the hands of men who wanted to be left alone. They try so very hard to mind their own business and provide for themselves and those they love. They resist every impulse to fight back, knowing the forced and permanent change of life that will come from it. They know that the moment they fight back, their lives as they have lived them are over. The moment the men who wanted to be left alone are forced to fight back, it is a form of suicide. They are literally killing off who they used to be. Which is why, when forced to take up violence, these men who wanted to be left alone fight with unholy vengeance against those who murdered their former lives. They fight with raw hate and a drive that cannot be fathomed by those who are merely play-acting at politics and terror. True terror will arrive at these people's door and they will cry, scream, and beg for mercy, but it will fall upon the deaf ears of the men who just wanted to be left alone. So, there are a lot of men out there that have had to unfortunately deal with the family court system. And if you know anything about it or know anyone that's ever had to deal with it, you know it's very common that a man, a father, will have to spend tens of thousands and in many cases hundreds of thousands of dollars just to be able to see their children every other weekend, every other holiday, yada, yada, yada part-time father, not even a part-time father, right? And they have to spend a fortune to get that. And then after they spend that fortune to get that, then they're going to have to pay so much out of their paychecks that they probably can't even afford to live themselves. I've been there. I don't want to hear no bullshit from people. I have been there. I have spent my 40 plus hours I was salary at the time that I'm speaking of in particular so it's, it could be you know in the summer it was more than 40 hours pest control summer was more than 40 hours winter was less than 40 hours whatever but I would do my weeks of work and I would go home with 51 dollars after paying my taxes after paying child support after paying health insurance that does me no damn good, I went home with $51. That's messed up. That is truly messed up. That a man can go and work, again, depending on what time of year it was and all kinds of things, it was pest control. I might put in 50, 60 hours that week and walk home with $51. That's insane. And that was one child. That was one child. The mother, by the way, who didn't have custody of him or didn't have guardianship of him, didn't have to pay a dime. Did not have to pay a dime. Nothing. But dear old dad did. Just to have his son kick him in the teeth he doesn't have and not have anything to do with him. He's an adult. I can address him directly. He's an adult. He should know that. I love Trey. All my boys' middle names are Michael. I love Trey with all my heart. 
and I hope and I pray that he, he enters back into my life. But I'm not going to take no bullshit from nobody. I was the one that was there for him from day one. I was the one that continued to be there from him for him. While his mother, who's no longer with us, and I've got nothing good to say about that. While she just abandoned him. Literally, um, abandoned him. There's no two ways of putting it. Abandoned him. I would have taken care of him. I would have, like, literally taken him in and raised him entirely. But that wasn't an option because I'm a man. I'm a father. That means I'm automatically a piece of shit. It gets old. Gets old. That's, that, that quote, that's where I'm at today. That's where I'm at today. It's been 11 years since I've seen my younger two kids. The reason why I haven't seen them is because it initially started out with her lie to the courts, I believe the 12th time that she walked her lying ass into a courtroom to get an order of protection. And I knew then, the father was telling me then, you better get a good look at them boys and you better give them a kiss. Because I knew then what was going to happen. The whole reason that I was involved in that crazy love triangle that I was involved in to begin with, and which is not the reason why she kept the children from me. In fact, I don't even think that's ever been mentioned anywhere, that the adultery. No, she didn't mention the truth anywhere. She just, the lies. Because the truth wouldn't have been reason to keep a man's children from him. Not at all. I was still a piece of crap for my actions. No two ways about that. There's no excuse that I have or can have for that. Plain and simple. But that was no reason to keep a man's children from him. However, fake claims of abuse is. Now here's the interesting thing. I'm supposedly this angry, violent monster. Well, and, and the, one of the things that really pisses me off is I asked those involved as far as with the courts and everything else to ask witnesses witnesses like our downstairs neighbors right the tenants downstairs right you could hear because i lived downstairs before and you can hear what was going on upstairs i can guarantee you that if you ask the tenants downstairs who they heard screaming and raising hell all the time it would have been my ex-wife not i you could ask my current neighbors if they hear me screaming and raising hell and all kinds of crazy stuff. No. But even my family took up against me. My mother took up against me when it came to all this. Why? Based on somebody that I haven't been since 19 years old. Since 19 years old. See, I'm going to lay out a little bit more of this evidence of the lies here. Okay? So when I was before 19, when I was younger than I, I, I was an angry, angry young man. And while I wasn't violent against people, I was violent. Um, I had holes in my bedroom walls and all that good stuff, right? But at 19, there was a trans, an absolutely life transforming change in me when it came to the anger now it didn't mean that i was all done and good with the anger it's there were some that still lingered on after that but the majority of my hardcore anger when that happened was gone and it just it simply had to do with me getting pissed off at myself and not wanting to be that angry person anymore so i backed off now my mom doesn't even know that my mom is totally unaware and i don't know that she would accept it if she did know but, you know, again, the anger still lingered a little bit in me yeah, over the years. I I'm sure I probably still had a few holes in walls, maybe a few, I don't know. But it wasn't too awful long, and I was no longer with her, my oldest son's mom. Um, and it wasn't too long after that that the rest of my anger subsided, okay? And I wasn't punching holes in walls. 
So here's my challenge to my exes and stuff. If I was such this angry, violent person, for one, right now, been written from the same guy since I don't remember what year exactly, 2017-ish? Not one hole in a single wall for me punching it. Pat, the owner of the last place that I would lived with my ex-wife, again, that was the girlfriend, not one hole in the wall for me punching it. Not one. But, but they both claimed I was this angry, violent monster. No holes in the walls, though. And there were no holes in them because, obviously, if they're going to lie about it, they damn well take evidence of it, right? Nothing. Nothing. You can go back and there's nothing. Why? Because that's not who I am. I have always tried to be a passive person. When you attack me, that changes. When you attack me, that changes. I no longer choose to be passive. And I, I will, at that point in time, become active. Now, there's a lot of things I'll brush off, and I won't even pay no mind, okay? But there are some things that I won't. Trying to get back a little bit more to the subject at hand here, grieving the loss of uh, the death of living children. People have no idea, I don't think. People that don't experience it, they really don't have no idea what it's like. They have no idea of how bad it hurts to have your heart just ripped from you. They're, those are your children. This isn't some fucking car that you lose in a divorce. This is children. Your offspring. The courts know what they're doing. Everybody involved knows what they're doing. Except for a lot of the fathers. A lot of fathers are just taking the beating and I don't think they're figuring it out. I don't think that they're figuring out the system that is set up to do this. And the sad thing is, is you can imagine having your children stolen from you, kidnapped from you, is a angry, frustrating, disappointing, depressing, anxiety-ridden feeling. It's rough. Ha imagine your child dying. It's rough. And then, if you do go into the courtroom, and then if you in any way show any kind of emotion because of your love for your children, oh, well, look. Look at him. Look at that violent person. The system is set up to do this. The system is set up to kidnap the children from the father. Made a post on Facebook today, and I'm going to kind of repeat the concept of it here. Uh, because I think it's important that people know. Number one, don't wish me a happy Father's Day. It hasn't been a happy fucking Father's Day for the last 11 years. Not even close. I don't want to hear it. It's not nice. Okay? It's not appropriate either. Don't tell me happy Father's Day. No. Nope. You want to do something for Father's Day for the men that are in my shoes or shoes near mine? You call out the bitches that did this. Call out the court system that did this. There's a bunch of men out there that just wanted to be left alone. I was one of them. But at this particular point in time, more and more and more, I feel I'm ready for war. I have this unquenchable desire to have somebody pick up myself and my things and take me out to the woods. And I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating I'm not I'm telling you straight I have this unquenchable desire 
be taken out in the middle of the woods and left off. And let me explain to you why, because I figured it out. And it has very much to do with that quote. Because I see that as my last resort before I have to go to war. I don't really want to go to war. At this point, I'm getting good with the idea, but I, I still don't want to. I still don't want to. I want peace. I have all my life wanted peace. My entire life. That's one of the reasons why women get so pissed off at me, because I won't play the argument game. I'll walk away. I'm not going to sit there and scream back and forth. I'm not going to do it. It, it. it accomplishes nothing except piss me off and put me in, in the position of that young angry man. And I don't want to go there. Again, it goes back to that quote. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be that guy. It is rough grieving the death of living children. It's been 11 years. At this point in time, those kids are so damn brainwashed, and I've had two family members already tell me that those kids are so brainwashed at this point. You want to do something with a man that's in my shoes or shoes like similar to mine, stand up for them. Be a voice for them. Because they can't be a voice for themselves. The moment that they speak up, they get attacked. They get attacked as the aggressor for trying to defend themselves. This has been happening to us for decades. There's a lot of people, whether it be 2A people or, or you know, people conservatives, Republicans, whatever, that are all, <laughs> because people are coming after me. Fuck you. Fuck you! I went to court for two fucking years to have the mother's name removed from child support checks so she would stop stealing them out of the mailbox and cashing them and going partying on them when the grandmother was raising my son that, that money that I was paying was supposed to be going to the grandmother whom was taking care of him. And it took me two years in a court to simply get a name changed to prevent her from doing that. Two years. And probably, I don't know, about tens of thousands, but over $10,000. That, I can guarantee, it was over 10000 I don't remember the total final bill because it was paid in chunks along the way. Two years to have a name changed to stop the theft of the child support checks. And nothing was done to her, to the mother. Not a damn thing. See, but I'm a bad guy because I stand up. Now, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to draw that fucking line right there. So I'm going to look you dead in the eye and I'm going to say, cross it. I didn't choose war. I didn't want war. But I'll damn well fight it. And it's time that fathers stand up, especially the estranged fathers, and they do the same. Shalom.